A press release was brought out a couple of weeks ago announcing that starting from Linux Mint 17, every version of Linux Mint will be based on the latest Ubuntu long-term support release. Long-term support release is a release of Ubuntu that uh, is released every two years and I believe has a um, support cycle of five. So I've always been a fan of Linux Mint uh, and I've, I've, it's always had a, a strong place in the Linux community as far as I'm concerned. They do a lot of things right where Ubuntu does a lot of things wrong. Uh, it is it refrains itself from having drastic user interface changes. It takes into account stability more than Ubuntu, or at least it seems to from me. Um, and it seems to be a lot more community orientated. They seem to take a lot of feedback from the community. Their included package in their install bundle seem to make a lot more sense than what Ubuntu try and sort of foist on you. Um, there are a good number of reasons why Linux Mint is a nicer to use uh, Linux distribution to Ubuntu. And I'm not hating on Ubuntu. Ubuntu has brought some amazing things to um, the Linux community as well. And the reason I started using Linux Mint was actually twofold. The first was that it actually provided widescreen support for my laptop at the time, of which Ubuntu didn't, and I didn't really know enough about Linux, and I wasn't really comfortable about Linux at the time to actually uh, mess around with the x.org file and all that kind of nonsense, so I decided to go with Linux Mint, with the added bonus that it included all the multimedia codecs and even the ability to read DVDs right out of the box. As a Linux newbie at the time, on about my third distribution, it was everything that I could ask for. Now, Ubuntu have kind of rectified th their position by giving you an option to download and install third-party codecs during the install process, which is which is pretty good. Linux Mint still do, um, as far as I'm aware, include a few more um, codecs and the like, and they seem to still be a little bit better than Ubuntu, but not so much that it's a deal breaker. So I um, mentioned in a previous video, and I got a little bit of flack for it, um, which was that I wasn't really happy or comfortable with Linux Mint's update procedure. The idea that you had to reinstall fresh. And I talked about how um, if you had to reinstall fresh for every update procedure, then it should be standard practice. It should be default in the install um, that you have your home on a separate partition. Uh, whereas it's not particularly difficult to put your home on a separate partition. It might not be um, obvious or something that a, a person who's new to Linux might think about, considering that Windows doesn't do uh, you know the same thing. So... Um, and, and the idea of reinstalling every six months does seem a little bit out of the way. It might be something for um, people who are more enthusiastic about the, you know, the, the software on their operating system and so forth. But for someone who uses their computer for work, who can't really afford to uh, spend a down day uh, every six months reinstalling programs and, and getting everything back. Um, the idea of long-term support releases actually really did appeal to me. So... I was using Linux Mint 13 up until recently, where um, which is based on the long-term support version of um, Ubuntu. And I've got to say, there really isn't that much difference between Linux Mint 13 and Linux Mint 16, or even Linux Mint 17, to that uh, matter of fact. And, uh, and I really do applaud Linux Mint for actually um, having a very consistent attitude to user interface and to their consumer base. And um, that is, yeah, like it's a very high compliment as far as I'm concerned. Um, so the latest version, so Linux Mint 17 onward, are going to be based on the long-term support release of Ubuntu. And this means a few things which I'm actually particularly excited about. First off, it means that the update process from, say, Linux Mint 17 to Linux Mint 18 should be a lot easier. It should be practically nothing, because there might be a few um, items in the Linux Mint repository that might be updated. There might be a few tweaks or uh, bug fixes, stability issues corrected, that kind of thing. But no major overhaul changes, nothing that might risk a regression. Um, and, and considering the track record of Ubuntu's long-term support releases, especially in terms of the, their stability and that kind of thing, um, and considering that Linux Mint obviously put stability pretty high up on their um, on their agenda, on their list of priorities, I think that this is a wise move. Um, a wise move because we're going to see a more stable Linux Mint. And I mean, Linux Mint was pretty stable as it was, but we'll see an even more uh, stable Linux Mint. We'll see a Linux Mint which hopefully should be easy to upgrade. I'm hoping that because the upgrade process is going to be uh, so you know, like a lot less invasive that they're going to be able to do it there and then rather than have to reinstall the whole OS from scratch. That's what I'm hoping. Um, and uh, and if they can do that, then, um, then that's uh, pretty much all the criticisms I had on Linux Mint um, sorted. And, uh, and, and, and there would be very little bad I can say about Linux Mint that, that couldn't be applied to 
uh, all Linux distributions, really. So I've got to say, it's a huge step in the right direction for Linux Mint, um, and it's a step in the more sensible. Many of you guys would argue and have argued uh, a step in the more boring direction, because I know there are a lot of, lot of you who are big um, Bleeding Edge fans who always like to have the latest and greatest software on your machines. And um, from some of your suggestions, Linux Mint Debian Edition was something that you suggested that I might try because it's uh, it's an evolving distribution. Um, and i got to say, I do like it. And judging from whispers that I heard from the Linux Mint community, it might be something they, that they fall back on as their flagship distribution should Ubuntu decide to take an absolutely crazy turn and uh, do something with their distribution that Linux Mint can't fix. Um, but then some rumours have come out saying that they're thinking of dropping it because not that many people use it. reason I don't use it is because a lot of the um, binary packages that just generally get released for software across the board are Ubuntu compatible, and I don't really want to have to not use them because of my choice in Linux Mint distributions. Uh, and also, even though it is a rolling distribution, it's still a lot of downloading that's required on a rural internet connection. That is something that I'm going to have to factor in. Um, if Obviously, if you had a really, really super fast internet connection, then that might be nothing of an issue, but it's the price you pay for living in a uh, in the countryside, I guess. But anyway, that's just a few thoughts on the new direction of Linux Mint. Um, and every time Linux Mint do something like this, it's by and large, something that is a step towards the ideal Linux distribution, and um, and certainly one that I would recommend for newbies. Like I say, the only thing really missing from Linux Mint now, and I'm going to assume that this is by choice, is the uh, is that there doesn't really appear to be any kind of solid app store that, say, Ubuntu has. Uh, so calling it a solid app store on Ubuntu is is a stretch actually, because they seem to have a half baked app store on uh, on Ubuntu. But it would be nice to see some. Uh, some avenue for professional developers to, to get stuck into the Linux community as well. Um, like I say, Linux is all about choice and it would be nice if there were some options for open source and some options for proprietary software as well because um, those different ways of building and distributing software both have their pros and they both have their cons. So that's just a few thoughts on the latest from Linux Mint. Please let me know what you think down in the comments section below. But it give, you know I've got to give it two thumbs up on that one. Boy, that is cheesy. Thanks very much for watching, and until next time, I've been Chris Ware, and you've been awesome. Take care now.